Hello, I'm Sanjay Dalal, founder and CEO of Ogoing, and you are watching Eye on Business. I'm Kevin McDonald, and you're watching Ion Business. And with us tonight is Sanjay Dalal, and Sanjay is the CEO of Ogoing, a social network for small business. Thank you so much for coming in tonight. I really Thank you for it. having me. I appreciate it. So, um, you know, social networking, of course, has grown a lot over the last mm -hmm. several years. So, mm -hmm. I'm going to let you really quickly lay a foundation for us to understand what do you mean by a social network for small business? Absolutely, and you are absolutely right. Social networks have grown over the last few years. I mean, Facebook is actually, if you look at the number of people it has, it's, it's more than the biggest country of the world. It's 1.4 billion people. Mm -hmm. And LinkedIn, you know, is a network for professionals. It's over 300 million people. Twitter has over 300 million active users. And then there is always Google+. Mm -hmm. But the problem with all these social networks is, is simple. It, they, none of them cater to small businesses. Mm -hmm. They have small businesses as members. They don't cater to them. Mm -hmm. Facebook says it has 40 million small businesses as members now. The reality is 2 million are advertisers. But what has happened is in the last few years, after Facebook became a public company, the small businesses don't get visibility on Facebook. You know, whereas before, if you have a 1,000 likes or, or connections, and when you share a post on Facebook, uh, you know, you, you, you probably get a few hundred to see it. Now, that's because they need to drive the revenue model, correct? They, they need, need to drive. To make you buy your, your attention. <laughs> Absolutely. And, of course, Facebook primarily is a consumer network. So even the small businesses on Facebook, uh, the ones who are focusing on their brands or focusing on targeting to consumers. Uh, with that said, you know, we, we do use Facebook extensively to drive business back to all going. Mm -hmm. So all going, what we plan on doing is creating a social network for small businesses. Because, you know, we believe they, they need a place to share their stories, mm -hmm. to talk about who they are, to talk about their products and services, and, and most importantly, make real connections. Because what's happening is uh, because these networks have grown so big in size, I mean, if you go to a small business, you're, you're like an ant in an ocean. You know, you right. go like, like Whoa, what do I do here? Where do I get started? And, and it's, it's mind-boggling because, you know, most of these networks, when you get on it, you don't get connections. People don't listen to what you're saying. And it's very all soon, noise. There's so much static out So there, much right? static, yeah. yeah. So now, is it business to business? I'm trying to understand the driver. Is it the business to business communication, or is it the ability of that small business to get their message out to the potential customer? So, or is it both? It's both. It's okay. both, absolutely. Because okay. uh, first... Once you create your ongoing business profile, you know, which is similar to a Facebook page or other networks, you know, the way they create their profiles. But the key difference is, you know, it's public. So when you share something to your profile, the post on ongoing, they are not only shared with the whole community. So everybody, you know, we have over 12,000 active members now on ongoing. So everybody sees it uh, and they interact on it. Not only that, this, uh, this post, they're getting indexed by all the major search engines, like Google, Bing, Yahoo. So, so the more you are sharing, the more your exposure is multiplying online. So now, think about it as your ongoing profile acts as a magnet for people to draw you in. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Like one of our active members on ongoing is, is a local company called Novatime. Uh, Novatime is a time and attendance workforce management software company, pretty, pretty big house. They are right here in Southern California. Mm -hmm. Uh, to give you numbers, on ongoing, they have over 12,030 followers or connections, direct connections. Mm -hmm. On Facebook, they have 191. Mm, okay. Twitter, 174. And LinkedIn, where they suddenly started growing, is 385. But still, the fact of the matter is, because of our focus on the businesses and on small business in particular, they are able to make a lot more legitimate, trusted connections mm -hmm. Uh, even though the fact is we are still much smaller. So how do, you, how do you find a revenue model in this process? Is, it, is this a 
Facebook like or LinkedIn like where you, you get for free and you're going to do an advertising stream or you're going to provide value added services? What's your, what's your uh, mode to, to revenue? That's a great question. So our initial focus was, of course, to build out the community. So until we, we got to our first 10,000 businesses, you know, we were giving, giving out the network. Because we wanted to create the value. We wanted to create traction. We wanted to create engagement, right? Mm -hmm. Now that we have that, uh, our revenue model, you know, we offer up different things. So we have an annual membership model of $99. First year free, so you, you join the network, kind of like a WhatsApp model. A little bit of crack, and then you know. Yeah. So you, you join the network, and you, you know you pay yeah. pay ninety nine dollars for the next year. Okay. Uh, we have a featured business model, but if you want to get featured by your business category, so let's say if you are in financial services, if you are in real estate, uh, you get a featured listing. If people search for that, you, your listing goes up. You know, in terms of visibility, thirty nine dollars a month. Again, we want to keep our price points, which are, uh, uh, you know, receptive to small businesses. How are you going to resist doing and ultimately ending up where Facebook did, which was you have the small business that can't afford to compete with the next guy, right? So right. how do we, you know, how are you going to, as a program, continue to allow that small business still to not be part of the noise as you get to be bigger? Do you have a plan for that? Absolutely. And the plan is to to keep, the focus on local because if you look at a lot of small businesses that they, they do business locally mm -hmm. so ongoing is built such that on the one hand you know you as a business can can shine you know at the at the entire website level mm -hmm. so you know where everybody sees it but you can also make sure that you do things where where you have visibility in your in your category mm -hmm. as well as in your local city or the county okay. so our our platform is you know done in such a way that you can actually get visibility all around and as you are growing, and if you are looking to make more connections regionally or at a state level or even at a national level, mm -hmm. we can help you do that too. So it is built from the ground up to do that. And actually, none of the other networks do that as well today. So from that perspective, right. um, are you going to be providing ranking services as well for the clients? So it's the Angie List kind of thing where you yes. can actually rate that, that person? We, we have reviews built into Ogoing already. So okay. you can today review any small business. And, uh, you know, we like to share positive reviews. We don't like to penalize small businesses, you know, uh, because one customer felt so. Sure. You know, so, so our goal is to make them shine, make their stories, you know, heard loud and clear, and make them successful. So, yes, we have reviews built in, and we can share aggregate reviews as well as reviews, you know, by each, you know, individual. So, Sanjay, tell me what's your vision for the next two years? The vision is to, to really scope out the local market first. You know, so, you know, we are born and bred here in Orange County. Uh, if you look at uh, the total businesses we have from Los Angeles to Orange County to San Diego, it's, it's close to over 2 million. Mm -hmm. So I can be really busy for the next two years. Yeah, that's what just, I... Just making sure I get a... need to go outside <laughs> of the, the... Just making border. sure I get a lion's share of this uh, market. And sure. the reason to do that is, you know, I, I follow... Uh, the model laid out, you know, by Peter Thiel in his book, you know, the 10x, you know, how to really grow your businesses, you know, from zero to one. Mm -hmm. and, and if you look at uh, some of the biggest companies that have taken off, like Facebook, like Airbnb, like Uber, they, they, they focused hyper-local first. And, and they, they were able to conquer the local market before they said, let's, let's go jump into a bigger way. So as Ogoing continues to, to move forward, right. how do you resist an extension of a Facebook or a LinkedIn going, hey, what he's got going on is pretty cool. I'm going to copy that. Is there any barrier to entry other than you're, you're, you're already ahead of the game? Uh, well, the, the, the focus is the barrier to entry because these guys, they're big. You know, they have bigger problems to solve. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and, and which is fine with me. Uh, you know, and I, we integrate. We integrate with Facebook. We integrate with LinkedIn. We integrate with Twitter okay. and Google+. Plus. So we, we are not on an island. We want to be giving the business the best of both worlds. So you get the exposure on ongoing. You can multiply it on the, all the other networks. So we want to be friends with everybody. Yeah, of course. We, we, want, to, of course. we want to make sure so that... So is there a distribution with your integration so that if you hit something on Ogoing, yeah. it's actually publishing out Absolutely. to your Absolutely. In real time. So it's a distribution social network as it's well. It's distribution as well. And, okay. and we are sharing. We are the only network that shares with photos oh, today on all major networks because it's, it's all about pictures now. It's all about visuals. And eventually we're going to add videos as well. And of course, so we want to innovate. We want to create a better platform. We want to create a stickier platform. We want to make sure businesses want to come back. They enjoy the place. 
uh, and they believe like this is this is the place they want to you know shine. Yeah, of course. Uh, and we want to do that. So, yeah. how do people get in touch with? Is it is it O G O I N G? That's it. Is that a .com? <laughs> yes, sir. O G O I N G. Ogoing .com. And with us is Sanjay Dalal, and he's the CEO of Ogoing. Thank you so much. Thank you so in. much, Kevin. Appreciate Cheers. it very yeah. much. Yeah. You're watching Eye on Business. This is Kevin McDonald, and we're out. Hi, I'm Dr. Henry T. Nicholas III, and you're watching Facets Television. Hi, I'm Sandra Hutchins. I'm the Sheriff Coroner of Orange County, and you're watching Facets Television. Hello, my name is Judge Jim Gray. I'm retired from the Orange County Superior Court, and you are watching Facets Television. Hello, this is Judge Jim Gray, and you are here with me in the judges' chambers. Our discussion today will talk about the fact that words mean something. Now, we in the legal profession use words as our building blocks, and we understand that there are shades of meaning between different words, or among different words. For example, there are more dialects in the world that do not draw the distinction between the word stranger and the word enemy. Consequently, of course, if you're in some small village and someone you don't know comes into your town, he is immediately a stranger. No, he's also an enemy. And you can imagine the amount of violence, unnecessary violence that's occurred because of that problem, or also a lot of lost opportunities. So we think as human beings in words. And if your vocabulary is limited and you do not understand shades of meaning, your thinking then isn't as strong as it might be. Other concepts, for example, we've all seen the road sign, slow traffic, keep right. Well, I'm not slow traffic, so I'll stay in the left lane. But, meaning the kind of the same thing, if you see something like left lane only to pass, oh, I'm not passing, so I'll go into the right lane. It just depends upon how we as human beings consider these things. Another one, really important, is the difference between the word solve and resolve. Now again, as a judge, I've seen this countless numbers of times. Most of the time when we have human problems, there's no solution. For example, if someone unnecessarily or wrongly trips you and you break your ankle, well, the solution to that would be to unbreak your ankle, to have kept that from happening in the first place. But that's just not possible. So what we have in our, phys in our human being contacts mostly are resolutions. We take you, we try to dust you off, aim you in the right direction, and do something to resolve the case, usually by paying some amount of money. So if we're talking to young people or old people, understand that concept that there really isn't any solution to most things. One more thing. It seems that sweeping the country, uh, there is now kind of a, a idea that when you give someone a thank you for something that you appreciated them doing, instead of like when I was raised saying, you're welcome, now instead most of our young people say, what? No problem. 
Well, what does that imply? Well, if it had been a problem, if it had been d difficult, I wouldn't have done it. But, well, that's okay. It was no problem. Of course, I do understand in Spanish the word for, in effect, you're welcome is de nada, which is almost the same thing as no problem. But you're welcome means I'm happy to have helped you. So maybe you can join me in trying to reverse that trend. And when someone thanks you and they mean it and it's appreciated, say, you're welcome. So, this is Judge Jim Gray in the Judges' Chambers. Thank you for letting me share these thoughts with you. And your response is, I hope it's your welcome. See you soon. Hello, this is Judge Jim Gray, and welcome back with me in the Judges' Chambers. When I'm talking with young attorneys or even older ones, I continually tell them or ask them the question, what is the biggest asset that we have as practicing law? And the answer is, I hope you agree, it's our integrity. You know, you're pretty much not going to be worth anything to your clients, past, present, or future, as well as yourself and those who are de depending upon you if you lose your integrity. How long does it take to build up a reputation of integrity? A long time, I think you would agree. How long does it take to lose a reputation of integrity? And the answer is, pretty much like that. I still remember sitting in the judge's lunchroom quite a while ago and someone said, well, Joe, who have you, what are you doing? And he says, oh, I'm in trial with such and such an attorney and all the other attorneys around the table groaned. I mean, that was the reputation of that attorney. You don't want that to happen to you. By the way, your children see what you do as parents, and that is your integrity. In fact, John Wooden, that great coach at UCLA, used to say, character is what you do when no one else is watching. That's when your integrity comes forward. And your children, of course, the idea of do as I say, don't as I do, doesn't work. A great light opera is Into the Woods, Stephen Sondheim, and it ends by saying with the song, children will listen, and they will. By the way, if your three-year-old starts using four-letter words, guess where your three-year-old heard them? It came from you. So cherish your integrity, work on your integrity, and keep it steadfast. Children will listen, and so will everyone else. That's what I believe from the judges' chambers. I hope you agree. See you next time. Hello, you're with me, Judge Jim Gray, and you're in the judges' chambers. Today I'd like to talk about this recent incident that happened at the University of Oklahoma, where you had some fraternity boys, I have to call them, uh, you know, involving those racial epithets and, and singing those songs. Just, just really, it was appalling to me, and I hope it was appalling to you as well. I am proud of the university that said, you know, I'm sorry to say that they still have the luxury of calling themselves Sooners. They shouldn't be. They shouldn't be connected to our university. And I applaud that, and I agree with them. And the fraternity as well. The National has, in effect, kicked out the, uh, the local chapter and uh, took them off their register, which, again, I think is great. But, you know, as we look at this stuff, and today, I mean, to year 2015, isn't it time to be beyond that sort of thing? And, and I, I would caution everyone to understand that we're human. And every human being tends to, of course, group with their racial group or economic group or whatever, and are somewhat fearful or even looking down at uh, people that are not of their racial group. Now, look. I'm a wasp, okay? I can't help it. I'm about as white Anglo-Saxon uh, Protestant as it comes. But I adopted a son from Vietnam a long time ago now. I'm very proud of him. But he would come home, maybe with his second or third grade from school, crying. And you know why? Because people were teasing him about having uh, slanted eyes. He was Vietnamese. And I, you know, I can tell him, well, Kai, don't worry about it, and you're fine, and all the rest of that stuff. But that's easy for me to say. And it's easy for those of us in the majority to say. But when you have an incident like in Oklahoma University, it gives a lot more evidence. It gives substance to people who are of African American or whatever race that they think that everybody feels that way. 
So I hope you kind of join with me in a, a mini rebellion. Let's go to a non-racial society. Let's treat everybody the same, which of course we should. And when you get into the census, for example, they ask what my ba race background is, and I just don't respond. None of their business, doesn't matter. And I do that in anything like that. So let's kind of try to get away from that sort of thing. By the way, you may not be aware of this, but there are more of the vernaculars, more of the, the uh, various types of languages uh, that have no distinction, for example, between the word stranger and the term enemy. Well, what happens if you live in a, in a little village where you don't have that difference and somebody you don't know walks in? Automatically that person is your enemy. Can you imagine how many different fights and loss of opportunities those villages have had because automatically anybody they didn't know was their enemy. So to kind of regroup in this, it's all in the nature of all of us to discriminate or look down at people that are not like us. But my goodness sakes, we're Americans and we're going to get beyond that. There is more anti-Semitism today around the world and it makes as much sense to me to discriminate against somebody because of their background or because of their racial issue then it, you know, you might as well discriminate against people who are from Ireland or from New Zealand or actually who are rooting for the New York Yankees. I mean, let's get over it and turn this back into what we all are. We are human beings, should be responsible for what we do, the, what we, how we perform, and certainly not our ethnic background. That's what I think in the judges' chambers. I hope you agree. We're Americans. Let's do this confidently, just like we are. That's what I think. We'll talk to you again sometime soon from the judges' chambers.